Hi guys, it's Karen. Um, I am making today this, what I am calling a caroling panda Christmas card. Um, I started off by making masks of Gerda Steiner's uh, Carol Kittens stamp set, and then I made a, a snowbank out of Lawn Fawn stitched hillside dies. And this here is Newton Nook's Evergreen stencil. Um, and I've made a mask of that as well. It's a lot of masking in this project. <laughs> so I started off by positioning these little kittens where I wanted them on the card. Um, you need a little bit of space at the bottom where the sentiment will go at the end. Uh, but I'm kind of positioning them here. The middle one is going to go at the back. So the one on the left and the right are going to be in the foreground. So they're the first ones to stamp. So I've put the masks down. Just remember to move the masks. I'm terrible with that. I f frequently forget and that just it just doesn't work. So take the masks away. Stamp those two front images down first. And then you mask them again. And then the little guy that's going to go in the middle, you don't you, you need to have these two masks so that the lines don't get all jumbled up. I actually find it easier to position this this mask or this stamp using the mask somehow I can see the lines a little better and it's somehow a little bit easier to figure out where I want him to go so I put the mask down and then I position the stamp over but just uh, don't forget to lift the mask off <laughs> at this point because I've done that <laughs> and it doesn't work so take the mask off stamp the third image And then I am going to do the background, so I am masking again to cover up that so I can do the stenciling. Here I'm checking to make sure I've got the masks on. I am bad with masks, truly. Uh, then I'm sticking down that snowbank where I want it to go. And now I can put the, uh, the evergreen stencil on. I just tape it to the back so that it stays in place. And I am using Distress Oxide Evergreen Bow Ink. I really didn't worry too much about shading these trees too well or anything. I just kind of put that ink down. I'm going to put Nouveau Glimmer Paste in Moonstone over top. So I'm just wiping off the excess ink with a baby wipe. And that Glimmer Paste, it's fantastic. I It sits on my desk for Christmas cards. It just gives such a great glitter to your cards. And it's so Christmassy somehow. <laughs> so... I have it out on my desk. There's that shimmer. It's beautiful. But it's very messy stuff, so you have to wash your stencil and your palette knife right away. And I remove the masks right away because I don't want that paste to stick them down either. So I did that, and then I went and cleaned up my stencil and my palette knife after that. And it dries fairly quickly. So here I'm making this pull tab. It's very simple. It's just a, a piece of cardstock. Yeah, there you can see it's two and an eighth of an inch by four and a half. It could be four and three quarters of an inch. Um, I've just corner rounded the one side. And all you need is that little stopper so it doesn't pull out. So that is that extra little strip there at the bottom. And I'm using an eighth of an inch double sided tape to adhere that. You just need to make sure you've covered that, that tape so it doesn't leave a sticky surface. Just stick it down and I use my bone folder to just make sure it was adhered. And that is the construction of that little pull tab. Pretty easy. And here I've made masks now of the, the lovely panda, the one with the envelope. And I made a mask of the envelope itself because I actually wanted that to be a music sheet that he was holding. So I'm going to show you here how I work that. <laughs> I've stamped them up and I'm taking a baby wipe now to kind of take out that inside heart. If you go over the lines, it doesn't really matter here. Um, you'll see because we've got that mask of the envelope. So just pressing down. And then you can see where that envelope should go. So I stick it down there. And then you can re-ink and stamp him up until he's you've got a good impression of him. And then for the sentiment, I used the berry um, from MFT's uh, Polar Bear Pals, I think it's called, from that set. I wanted this little guy to be singing Berry Christmas because <laughs> I thought that was cute. 
So I just ink up the berry here and I, I'm a lazy masker so I just put masking tape on either side of it to make sure I, nothing else stamped down. So there's the berry. And then for the Christmas, I took it from Lawn Fawn's Here We Go Waddling. Um, and just that Christmas word at the bottom. I used the other sentiment in there. Uh, we wish you a Merry Christmas on the front. So it was kind of handy to have that set with the Christmas in it. Now I've masked off the bear because <clears throat> I do the same thing. I'm trying to figure out here now where I want this uh, tab to line up. I, I kind of wanted it to look like a, a continuous scene. So for the snowbank, I'm trying to line it up with the snowbank on the right, if that makes sense. So I've masked the bear, and if you notice, I've masked off the far left-hand side of that tab as well, because that's where you're going to have it sticking out, and it will just say pull. So you don't really want the trees on that. I've done the evergreen boughs in the in the Distress Oxide ink and added my Glimmer Paste. Remove all the masks, clean everything up. And this stuff dries really quite quickly. It's, I think within a half an hour, it's dry enough to work with. So here I needed the music to go on. I think if you're musically inclined, you could probably draw music on, but I definitely needed Gerda's help for this. So I'm using that, that little kitten and I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm gonna just ink up the music part of it and wipe away any lines that I don't want with the baby wipe so that I can stamp that down. Now, when I stamped this, it, I didn't get a very good impression and it kind of moved, so I was worried I was really gonna make a mess. So I just pushed that down because it didn't stamp terribly well. I got my Copic marker, multi-liner pen to uh, kind of fill in. I could see where the music symbols were and I just filled that in as best I could. And here I am just coloring up this little bear. Um, I'm using N6 for the darkest parts of him. So around the, the ears and within the eyes. These panda bears are fantastic for anybody who's a bit worried about coloring because quite honestly, you could just go straight black with these, these bears. And I think you'd have a great little image already done. And he's so cute. These bears are just adorable. Like, he's got such a soulful look on his face, this guy. So here I'm just, uh, I left a bit of room for a bit of a highlight on the top of his paws. Not much really. And I'm doing the bottom of his feet here. <clears throat> just going around. My markers were incredibly dry, so I ended up uh, having to stop this video and refill my markers so it's a little bit jerky well okay the whole thing is actually a little bit <laughs> jerky I know but right where I'm filling these markers seemed worse so this is N4 that I'm coming in with here and I am blending out that N6 so it's still fairly dark it, it still reads like quite a dark black but it's just a little bit lighter just to get a bit of shading, I guess, to, to everything. So I'm just blending out that N6 all around. I left a bit of room on the paws for uh, even more of a highlight, just because I find, especially on this paw and, and the left front paw on the foot, uh, it's black on black if you just went straight, which makes it a bit tougher to read where one paw ends and the other starts. So I've left a bit of room there at the tips for the N2 marker. Just blending all of this out. Sorry my camera keeps f focusing and going out. It just uh, doesn't really like it when I'm moving around, I think. And that's the N2 that I'm using there now to finish off the highlight. And I used a little on the ears. I have to say I wished after I saw the video that I had put a bit more black on his ears, but I didn't. You guys will get perfect ears. That's an N0 marker that I just used to to uh, blend into the, the white of his head. And this is R00, which I used on the ears and the pads of his feet. I use it to make uh, little cheeks afterwards too. That'll come. 
Here I'm using C2 to give his head a bit of shadow and down below where there would be a shadow. Um, I find this really helps to give him, make him look a little more 3D. So it, it seems dark when you're first putting it on, but it actually makes quite a difference. This is C0 now to blend out the C2. And it just helps to round down his head a little bit more, make him look a little fuller, I think. So I just kind of went around, mostly on the sides, a little bit on the top, and then down below here. He definitely needed a bit to fill in, because he'd be pretty shadowy, I think, down there anyway. Just fairly finishing him off. And here's his little cheeks. I figured he was an embarrassed little panda. He's singing along, but <laughs> I'm thinking he's an embarrassed panda. <laughs> I don't know. It just tickled my funny bone. This is a little black glaze pen that I've put on his nose and his eyes, which really does make a difference. It really makes them pop a little bit more. And I didn't have a great marker for this, but that is Y21 to kind of make it look like an old music sheet. And here is the front. So I've already colored the little kittens in. And I am masking them off because I'm about to do the sky, I believe, here. So all that uh, paste has dried. I did put the mask back on for the snow, but I honestly don't know that you need it. Um, the mask for these trees kind of covers the bottom. Now, I should have made another mask, because this one wasn't sticking horribly well, which you're going to see. But I was so lazy, I really didn't feel like making another one of those. So I started off here with picked raspberry kind of down at the bottom mostly where I felt like it would be right around their heads. Just blending that in. Yep, there's that mask. <laughs> Wasn't very good, I'm sorry. So just blending all the picked raspberry in. I do go in after and fill it in a bit more. It just wasn't dark enough. Uh, this is Seedless Preserves. These were all the oxide inks, but I'm sure you could do the same with regular Distress inks. I just happen to have these out on my desk. Uh, this is Wilted Violet that I'm doing the top of the sky with. Blending, blending, blending. And there I am putting this more of that picked raspberry. I just realized it wasn't really very dark down at the bottom. And then the last uh, was this chip sapphire, which I went all around the top, down the sides a little bit, and then I gave it a pretty good spritz with my mister and wiped it off. And then you can peel everything off. And I did the same with those inks on the tab, the little tab that we were doing with the panda. I did the same colors, as well as an extra little strip that I used for the sentiment. Now here, I noticed that my mask had covered a little bit too much, and so I'm going back in with, I believe that's a V12 marker. Just, you don't really notice that afterwards, but it just helps to get rid of that little white that we had. So here's that extra little strip that I had inked up, and I'm doing that We Wish You a Merry Christmas sentiment from the Lawn Fawn Here We Go Waddling Stamp Set. And I'm just uh, stamping that in Versamark ink and white heat embossing it. Now... I don't have a die for this. I don't know if there even is one. So I am just fussy cutting this. And um, it's a little bit tricky in parts, I guess, just to get it smoothly done. But if you just go around those letters, I think it works out. I did fishtails at the end. So cut it off, cut up the middle, and then from the corners to the middle, we'll make a nice fishtail. tail. 
and I foam mounted this on uh, well foam foam strips to put on the front and then I took my nouveau shimmer pen to just add that shimmer all over the snow and up into the trees as well so it's a very shiny card <laughs> which I think is kind of fun for Christmas anyway it's very snowy looking and there you can see all that shimmer in there a lot of shimmer I also had stamped the little musical notes I forgot to mention that that I put those on both the tag right there and uh, the front now here I I have the Lawn Fawn uh, picture changing die and so I use this pull for this but you could stamp pull on in any color you wanted you can if you have a die with the letters you could put it on you could put an arrow that way if you wanted um, so here I'm just uh, I'm putting glue down and I I'm filling in the little die cut holes there <laughs> I, I didn't think I could line these up nice and straight without the the negative of the die cut there so I glue those down push them down and then because I'm always afraid I've already got glue on the, <laughs> the piece I don't want I take it off right away there you go nice and straight Okay, so now it's time to assemble that. And here I'm just trying to line up where I want that tab to pull out. I kind of want it roughly parallel to where the kittens are. So I'm holding it down and marking on the back where that is. Then I use this double-sided foam tape to run along the top and the bottom. You're trying to make a channel for that tab to go in. So you need it to be surrounded by foam tape like a, a strip of foam tape this tape I'm using is um, oh, it's from Uline here in Canada I don't know if it's in the States as well or elsewhere but it's definitely stickier than the 3M tape but it's way less expensive so I'm trying it out I'm trying to <laughs> give it a good go but it does get sticky so here I'm trying to figure out can I get the a straight line of this tape down without interfering with the, the back of the t this tab with the stopper on it and it looked like it would go so I I'm putting down that piece of tape and it fits in that channel that I've created there now now I'm showing there you have to put a stopper at the back so it doesn't just go right through to the other side so here I'm running a piece of foam tape right up next to where I want it to end so it doesn't come out the other end and just along the very outside of that as well and here uh, I think I'm showing you that you need something at the front as well because it will just that tab can just pull out which you may or may not want I don't I, I guess if you had a gift card in or something you could do that um, so here all I'm doing is adding a little bit of foam tape to act as a stopper to the back of the tab. That stopper you've put on at the back will run up against those little pieces of foam tape. Yes, yeah, so I'm just zooming in here to show you that. So it will stop. That tab will run along that channel that you've created and it will stop at the end so it doesn't come out. Now here I've removed the release paper from the foam tape and I am just positioning that tab where I want it to go, holding everything in place, and then I'm going to stick it to my card front. And there you go. And that's all there is to that. It just it moves in and out really easily. I just adhered the sentiment to the front of it. And that is a caroling panda. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, guys. I hope you have fun with this one, and hopefully I'll see you again the next time. Thanks a lot. Bye.